All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your boy E here with all your wrestling factoids. Just kind of reflect on what we talked about here. We talked about WWE Monday Night Raw review, our WWE NXT preview. We also talked about Liv Morgan going to Hollywood. Is it good for her career? Is it time for her to hang up her boots in terms of wrestling? Maybe. Maybe not. Listen to the segment. Uh, and segment four, we talked about uh, today in wrestling history, May 21st. A lot of cool things happening. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to our uh, fifth and final. I keep wanting to say fourth because for the longest time we did four segments. Uh, so for the fifth and final segment, I want to talk about a women's wrestling power ranking. So let's go ahead and jump right on into that. So uh, I'm going to give you guys my power rankings in terms of the women's divisions. And this means Ring of Honor. This means uh, TNA, uh, Raw, SmackDown, all over the wrestling globe. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead, and, uh, you know, go ahead and start. So first and foremost, at number 10, I have Sol Ruka. Sol Ruka is obviously one of the best, um, you know, kind of wrestlers that's, um, you know, coming out of NXT. She got injured. But uh, she recently qualified for the WWE NXT Battleground uh, North American uh, Women's Championship match at NXT Battleground. And I don't know. She just seems really, really good. I can see, you know, the most of this part is like I can see a title around her waist. I can see her kind of being that total baby face or, hey, if WWE wants her to go heel, I would still love Sol Ruka, which shows that she has so much star power. She has the fans behind her back. And there's no doubt in my mind that this girl would definitely be, you know, one of the best wrestlers, female wrestlers in terms of the women's division and, you know, you know, all over the wrestling globe. So, you know, pretty cool. Number 10, I have Sol Ruka. Number nine, I got Bailey. I love Bailey, and I know she is the WWE uh, Women's Champion. But she recently fought a match with uh, Naomi and Tiffany Stratton. Not really too big superstars to kind of fight against in the title match. Like you have the up and coming Tiffany Stratton, and you have the kind of the older like Naomi. Um, so that was her first title defense. I don't think it's as good as like someone like a Roxanne Perez who's defended her title like probably like three or four times uh, by now. But uh, I love Bailey. Love the fact that she winded up as a babyface. And by all means, if you're on the list and if you're number nine, you also have to realize you're number nine. I, you know, you made it to the top 10 out of out of hundreds of women's wrestlers all over the globe. So, you know, if you're, Bailey, if you're watching this, don't take this too personal, man. Don't take this too crazy because, you know, you made it on the list. Absolutely crazy. Good for you. Love Bailey as a baby face. Do not ever, ever turn to a heel again because that would be absolutely terrible. And um, uh, once again, I got little Fettuccini68 talking who will turn heel, Jade or Belair? Uh, I think Belair. I feel like Bella, well, recently she's been kind of rumored to like be pregnant. So she might be taking some time away from the WWE. But before that, I would have loved to see Bianca Belair go, go uh, heel. I've actually did a couple of podcasts about that. Um, you know, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago. Um, honestly, just let me know. Who would you think would be better, Cargill or uh, Belair going heel? I, you know, I, I like Jade coming out of AEW. Um but it'd be kind of cool to kind of have that mantra, kind of that persona like that. Although people know that Jade is from AEW, the moment she makes it to the WWE roster, she does everything she can to kind of sabotage the women's division. And everybody in the back of their minds, they're like, oh, yeah, Jade was totally AEW. She's totally taking it to these these dumb WWE stars. Like, that would be cool in that aspect. But ultimately, I I don't know. I, I, I would say Belair would probably be a better heel because people, um, you know, uh, exactly. Honestly, that's a thousand and ten percent correct. Uh, Belair needs to be repackaged. Absolutely, that pro it's probably sums up everything because, like, she was a former WWE Women's Champion, lost it to Io Sky with her, her money in the bank cash in, and um, she just needs another purpose. She needs another purpose. I feel like, um, you know, her with that frustrations, and then you saw her frustrations with Bailey and, uh, you know, Naomi kind of moving forward. And it was just, I don't know, it was just kind of, you can kind of sense the tension. Like kind of what I mentioned where you saw that promo on uh, Friday Night SmackDown where you saw Jade Cargo and Belair kind of come to, each, come to each other and be like, yeah, we're tag team partners. Yes, we are the women's world tag team champions. But ultimately, if this ever happens between us and Queen of the Ring, I'm going to take you down, girl. And like that subconscious, that intensity, uh, would it would be pretty cool. It would be pretty awesome to see what they do with that. 
and the pay and the pay-per-view thoughts moving from Sunday, I think it's gonna be a great, I think it's gonna be probably one of the best Jeddah Saudi Arabia pay-per-views that we've had, I would say in ever. I would say honestly and ever because without Vince McMahon, because we've had some pretty, pretty bad ones in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia and, uh, you know, uh, Rihad, like it just this needs to be good. This needs to be good because so much people I know me as a wrestling fan. I see these pay-per-views coming to Saudi Arabia and part of me is like, you know what? Any matches that kind of happen at Crown Jewel are kind of like, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but kind of like kind of like kind of like BS matches. Like, it's not really going to matter toward their storyline. There's not going to be any title changes. And if there is, it's going to be the United States Championship or, like, one of the tag team championships. So um, I feel like this pay-per-view in order to kind of establish kind of like a, you know, kind of like a credibility for uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, I feel like this needs to be good. So definitely looking forward to that. So, yeah, let's go to move on to our number eight. Number eight, I have Lash, uh, Lash Legend. I love Lash Legend definitely in the power rankings for the WWE women's division. Um, she recently been kind of, you know, she's been kind of, you know, flirting with Trick Williams and kind of showing metaphor that like, hey, it's not Trick that's going to do this at all. Um, and then I love that with her. And then I love the fact that she was a WNBA star and she made it to the, you know, to the SmackDown or, you know, Made it to WWE in general. Like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty badass. Love that. You can kind of see it in her matches that this girl has so much potential. Uh, I can see, you know, she qualified for the ladder match at NXT Battleground for the inaugural um, WWE NXT Women's North American Championship. Definitely it's going to be hard to kind of knock her off. She has a bright future ahead of her. Absolutely 110%. Can't wait to see what she does next. All right, number seven, we have Lyra Valkyrie. Lyra Valkyrie, although she did lose her championship to Roxanne Perez at spring break-in, she's been absolutely impressive as hell. She's uh, she's in the finals with the Queen of the Ring representing Monday Night Raw. Like, who does that? Like, that's crazy. This girl is her, man. This girl's going to absolutely kick ass. Love the fact that she's doing this, uh, you know, strictly from, you know, winning the WWE, uh, you know, draft, coming to Monday Night Raw, showing the world that she's no one to be kind of, you know, put to the side. So absolutely love Laura Valkyrie in this, you know, position. All right, number six, I have Roxanne Perez. Love Roxanne Perez. Like I said before, out of all the WWE women's champions or whatever, I feel like she's kind of been the one to defend her title more kind of be stuck in these you know storylines or predicaments or bookings that where she kind of has to you know kind of has to take care of the match kind of has to take care of the promo kind of has to sell herself as a total heel uh so obviously a, a lot of responsibility on that a lot of people think that being the jerk is such an easy thing dude hey yeah man go out there be a giant jerk off it's not that easy it's not that easy to sell the fans. It's not that easy to fool the WWE universe. I know for my end, I sometimes I see heels like I saw him Bailey, and I kept watching. I was like, awful, <laughs> absolutely awful. Bailey was one of the worst heels in WWE history. Better as a babyface. Love this kind of scene to see her back as a total babyface. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, next uh, we have our number five. Number five, we're going to talk about Tony Storm. Love Tony Storm the way she's been, you know, kind of in the AEW. Um, this girl can't lose. This crap, she cuts amazing promos. Definitely something Liv Morgan should probably pay attention to. Not trying to be a jerk, but. Um, Tony Storm, she came from WWE, definitely one of the, you know, the wrestlers or the superstars at WWE. Probably wish they would have, uh, you know, signed before she ultimately kind of had to leave. Uh, but I love Tony Storm, definitely wish the best for her. You know, she's kind of heading toward double or nothing. She's against, uh, uh, man, Renee, Renee something. I can't put my nail on the head. If you guys know, you know, who she's fighting in double or nothing, put it in the chat. Let me know. Uh, but Tony Storm, she's good. She's good. She cuts good promos. She has good matchups. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to see her uh, at, uh, you know, double or nothing on Sunday. So it should be pretty awesome. Next, we have Becky, Becky Lynch at number four. Becky Lynch at number four. Becky Lynch, where whenever she gets into a match or a storyline or another superstar, even if another superstar is trying to cut a good promo, ultimately the respect – the responsibility is on the person cutting the promo. But Becky Lynch finds a way to validate that, you know, even if it's a shitty promo, she's able to kind of, you know, make it up, you know, 
kind of be like, okay, yeah, this is intense. Like, you're telling me this, you're telling me that. Like, she kind of swings it along, and then the heel like that's like, yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Becky Lynch has definitely been carrying the women's division for the longest time. Definitely deserves that spot at number four. What's going to put our number one, but there's just so many amazing wrestlers in the women's division. At number three, I'll have Willow of Nightingale. Willow of Nightingale, uh, she's the AE, uh, AEW um, TBS champion, going to fight Mercedes Monet at double or nothing. But this girl's just a star. She's a total star. She's a, she's like a dynamo in terms of like just professional wrestling. This girl's been all over the wrestling circuit. She deserves respect. She's a great role model. She recently visited a wrestling high school just to kind of tell like, you know, I think just to kind of be like, hey, like your wrestling, your wrestling dreams could come true too. So I love Willow of Nightingale. Definitely think she's the best baby face that AEW has to offer. If Mercedes Monet loses, uh, no, if Mercedes Monet wins against Willow at AEW double or nothing, I will organize a giant riot and we will tear down Tony Khan's house. We will tear down AEW. We will tear down Turner Broadcasting. I tell you. I tell you. And no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, ultimately, love uh, Willow Nightingale. Out of every uh, wrestler in the women's division, all over the professional wrestling industry, she's definitely busted her ass to uh, you know get to the position where she's at right now. So absolute respect. Love that. We're running out of time rapidly. Uh, so number two, we have Athena. Athena, the longest reigning Ring of Honor, uh, a woman's uh, heavyweight champion. Uh, loved her in WWF, WWE, but they had to screw up and mess up her uh, her bookings to the point where she she was great. She was great in NXT, made it onto the Raw, you know, uh, you know, main card. They didn't really do crap with her. They didn't, you know, really live up to the hype and didn't like help her reach her potential that she could possibly do. So honestly, for her not her for her failing in the WWE has absolutely reflects on her. Absolutely nothing, nothing at all. It's all about WWE and the creative that there was run during the Vince McMahon era. So, you know, way to mess that up. You lost another good superstar. And number one, number one of the women's division, women's wrestling power rankings. Number one, we have TNA Knockouts world champion Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace continues to be just oh so impressive. No one can take her down. No one could cut good promos like her. She in her matches. She's absolutely dominant. And look at her physique. Like, she's absolutely... Oh, man, like she's amazing. <laughs> she's definitely one of the best women's wrestlers. And I don't know, I kind of really liked her coming to the WWE in the Royal Rumble. Definitely wish I kind of thought if she would have won the Royal Rumble, it would have been absolutely like mind blowing, would have been pretty awesome. But uh, obviously that didn't happen. But it was cool to see her in the WWE. In the future for her, for her career. I wouldn't mind to see her go into the WWE at all. Totally go in there and kick ass would be awesome. A nice feud with her and Nia Jax would be, oh, man, that that bust out your popcorn, bust out your sodas, bring your milk, dead, sour patch kids, and red vines to this amazing theatrical match between the irresistible force and the strongest there is. Jordan Grace. So that'd be pretty badass. Jordan Grace is definitely the best women's wrestler on the face of this planet as of today. So, um, yeah, that was my power ranking, my, my women's wrestling power rankings. Hope you guys like it. And before I end it off real quick, when I, you know, acknowledge my boy, a uh, little fettuccine 68, um, he's Jacob Fatu going to be at the pay-per-view maybe. Uh, but there's been a lot of speculations that they do not want, uh, Jacob to, um, you know, debut because they have not really kind of created solo Sokoa and kind of ha have not like built him up to kind of be this uh, tribal chief persona. He's not ready. He's not ready yet. So they, they fear that if Jacob comes in, it would absolutely destroy, um, kind of the upbringing, kind of like WWE, you know, building blocks, trying to get solo Sokoa to be like, Oh, solo Sokoa is this badass guy. He's the tribal chief. He'll mess up anybody, man. So it would be, you know, kind of crazy to see, uh, Jacob Fatu, um, you know, make his debut, uh, but ultimately, and Hey man, peace. Thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC wrestling over podcast. We're live every day, um, uh, Monday through Friday, definitely 110%. Absolutely loved it. Thank you for making this, um, you know, wrestling show a lot more interactive. Definitely for making uh, one of the best shows I've ever hosted. So thank you so much. Respect. Respect.
So, um, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, um, yeah, I hope you guys like my show. And, oh, you're going to have you, uh, what's the, what's your favorite Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie? Ooh, my, you know what? I think that's the same question I asked my boy Nelson from the GSMC uh, basketball podcast. Um, my, fa- <laughs> my favorite Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie. Uh, probably, I think Nelson brought this up. I think Moana. Moana, because I'm a Disney dad. I'm a Disney dork. What could I say except you're welcome? And I just, I, I think he did really good in that role. Absolutely, 110%. Sure, his face wasn't on there, but I feel like, uh, you know, my favorite Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie is you know, Moana. And totally kind of, you know, flipping, pulling a 180, I would definitely probably see him faster. I don't know if you got if you don't know if you watch Faster, where he was this complete badass, where he was where his brother and his gang was like a, a bank, uh, you know, band of bank robbers, you know, eventually caught up by another group that wanted to steal their money. And it was just, you know, total badass, you know, absolutely love it. And uh, thank you once again, little Fettuccini for, you know, 68 for being my boy tonight. So, uh, yeah, make sure you tune in tomorrow's show. I made the show have a lot better with you in it. So, guys, like I said, thank you so much for tuning into my show. Um, the, G- the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us. So please remember to, you know, Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show and just leave a positive review. Leave a positive review here at the GSMC Sports Network. We love peace, love, and positivity all the way 100%. And it really does make a difference, guys. And honestly, really 100% does. We also invite you guys to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, slash X, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. And um, once again, if I I've made you a wrestling fan by now. We have the NBA playoffs absolutely heating up. A lot of good analysis going into these games. What to expect from the Indiana Pacers, the um, Boston Celtics, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and uh, the uh, Dallas Mavericks. I can't believe I forgot the Dallas Mavericks because they're so forgettable. I'm just kidding. Uh, My boy Nelson on the GSMC Basketball Podcast has all your cool stuff, has all the good stuff heading into the matchups so you can watch it, so you can watch it with like a mindful of experience and be like, oh, shit, like that's crazy. We also have my boy Kenneth on football, talking football all the time. We all know the NFL in terms of headlines and breaking news. It's totally king. Can't beat out the NFL. We also have Hoops and Heels, your one-stop shop for women's res- for women's wrestling, for women's uh, you know sports. Uh, we also have the Andrew Tate Show. Definitely good things. We have uh, you know just sports, sports, sports. TJ, Jeremy, sports. So it's it's, it's good. It's good. So make sure you uh, you know listen to uh, the GSMC Sports Network, and it's absolutely free. You don't have to pay for absolutely anything. It's absolutely free. We love podcasting. We love talking about sports. It's a passion of ours. And we want to bring you guys into this family. It's the bloodline of the GSMC Sports Network. So, guys, honestly, once again, thank you for uh, tuning into the show and have a phenomenal night.